figure something out. I got to do a better job helping my team out uh, with drawing fouls or gamesmanship because I thought we did a nice job of getting into the paint a couple of times and we got guys lifted. But when you get a guy lifted in the air like Jalen does, you just got to jump into his body and see if you can get to the free throw line because our last two losses against Dallas, uh, they shot 33 free throws to our 12. Luca had 14 free throw attempts. And similar to the night, you know, they, uh, uh, New York had 29 free throw attempts to our 12, and, um, and Jalen had 10 of them. So, you, you know, we have to do a better job in, with our gamesmanship, especially when we're driving to the rim and we get a guy lifted. You know, right now, <clears throat> I, I, I'm assuming this is why we're not getting any calls or not getting as many as I feel like we should. When we get guys lifted, we're taking tough fadeaway shots, so our gamesmanship has to be better to get us to the free throw line, and get, especially against the better teams. So I, I, I thought uh, it's something that I have to help them with and we have to do a better job of. Um, the second thing is, can coach really do a better job of that? Welcome into the pregame show here on If You Don't Like That. Ryan and Sackdown here. We're going to get you ready for the Kings and the Celtics. Talk about a difficult back-to-back. -back. Look, I only watched the condensed game of last night because I was in Stockton covering that one. And uh, the tale of two first or the tale of two halves, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I found the audio very interesting after the game. We're going to talk about this really quick on the other side. Remember what Mike Brown was talking about right there, talking about um, gamesmanship, trying to draw more fouls. Um, that's what physical teams do, right? Well, I don't know. What is this team? We'll talk more about it. We'll get you ready for tonight. Pre-game show right here, starting in just two minutes. Sacramento missed you. Carter. Stolen by Williams. And look at this. Oh, you don't know like that. You don't know like NBA basketball. Fox. Goodbye. Oh, you don't know like that. You don't know like NBA basketball. The exclamation point from the Eric Fox. Oh, if you don't know like that. You don't like NBA basketball! Boy, that's an ESPN highlight right there. Whoa! Carlson comes in. How about this? Holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley. That is a major league smudge. Welcome back into If You Don't Like That. Happy to have you here. Ryan in Sacktown taking you up to the Kings and the Celtics. Uh, a tough one. A very tough one to deal with tonight. I mean, look. If there's one the Kings might get unexpectedly, uh, maybe it's this one. There's some guys out for the Celtics. Uh, it's really what happened last night. You guys tell me what happened. Um, I want to hear from you. I mean, what I'm getting or taking away from last night's game was coaching could have been better. That's what I'm hearing a lot of. There should have been breaking up of some of these runs, some timeouts. I'm hearing shot selection. I, I'm hearing all these things. So you guys pull it together for me. And here's another thing. I'm having trouble making sense of Coach Brown saying what he did after the game. But then De'Aaron Fox was asked about Coach Brown's comments. Here's what De'Aaron had to say. Mike talked to us about um, gamesmanship and, and regarding getting to the free throw line that he needs to do something maybe to, to try to get you guys to, I don't know, embellish a little bit more, do what you can to, to get calls. I mean, where where are you at in terms of your need to do that or, you know, teammates need to do that so, you know, you don't see a disparity at the free throw line like you saw tonight? And if you get grabbed, call the foul. I don't, I don't really um, – the reason I don't like doing it is because say you're trying to get a call now you're not focused on making the shot. Now, if they don't call the call, you're probably not making the shot. So uh, I've always been a believer in you, you go in, try to make the shot. If they call the foul, they call it. If they don't, it's what it is. But I mean, if they see a foul, like you got guys getting hugged, going to the basket, it's clear as day and they don't call it. So it is what it is. 
All right. I, I don't care about, and he's right with the back end of that, that uh, they've got to call the fouls. They do. And I think that's part of the issue the Kings kind of ran into last night. They didn't know how the game was being called. So um, what I did find interesting is that little kind of cackle, right? And it, usually you don't see the star point guard going against what the coach says. I mean, you don't know if what coach Brown said, it, it's just weird guys. It's, it, it's weird. Um, Adam, welcome in. Let me know what you guys think on it. I, I want to get your thoughts. Uh, let's see Derek white. That's right. The Kings will be going out, uh, with the Celtics, not playing those guys. What's up, Ash? guys got the link in there if you uh yeah didn't miss much thanks adam yeah john finch went with me to the game last night we had a great time got to uh hang out got to talk to a lot of people in the organization um really exciting times towards the end of that game it was much like a playoff game and if you listen to the king's court today jalen slosson made uh, i would say two two nba plays last night I said it um, earlier in the season. He's shown flashes of what he could be just in spurts athletically that that raw athleticism is there. Pretty exciting. Uh, this channel made me a Kings fan. I love it. And it's a Sonics Joe. Joe, that means a lot because you've been through a lot. You guys lost your team. You almost got our team. I mean, I, I guess like we kind of have to be Sonics fans if they come to the NBA. I do know this. They should be the next place in line for a team. All right, PK, what you got for me, buddy? PK says, here we go. John Finch says, come on. Adam Barnes was irrelevant. Yes, Barnes struggled. So I would expect a heavy dose of that tonight. I think they're going to get right to it with Harrison. But again, the decision-making, I, I just feel like there's been missed signals, missed communications there's been opportunities for maybe this team to communicate a little bit better, whether it's on the court or off the court. When I watched the condensed game last night, here's what I saw. And this is coming from a guy that was part of a college basketball program at San Diego state. We doubled the post every single time without question. It didn't matter if tiny Tim and mini me were the forwards and, uh, Who's going to be your starting center? Throw somebody in. I don't know. One of the wrestlers that's smaller, okay? So it, it, it wouldn't have mattered. So the Kings absolutely, absolutely have to start taking care of their business. Lance, hey, it was great meeting you last night. I know. I know. It was really cool. I appreciate you taking the fam down there. Um, yeah, I don't actually, I think they called it just about right, but there was an official last night, um, that I thought was just not in tune with the rest of the team. Uh, so yeah, uh, and getting back to, uh, really quick, Lance, I want to finish that thought. I know I didn't finish it right there about doubling the post. We did it all the time and it causes you to scramble. And that's what you guys saw in the second half. Now, in order to be able to do that effectively, and actually, before we get to that, the first problem is you have to double Jalen Brunson. The Kings have trouble guarding point guards that have a lower center of gravity, that play physical, that know how to use their physical attributes to get fouls. That's kind of what Mike Brown's hinting at because De'Aaron just saw Jalen Brunson do it really well. De'Aaron's seen SGA do it a couple times. And it does not it's not just De'Aaron. How concerned are we now that two games in a row, Keon Ellis has fouled out yet he's seen better competition in the backcourt. So keep an eye on that tonight. Again, if I'm Mike Brown, I'm throwing everything I have at this Boston team just to see what sticks. But when you double the post, this is the entire point I was going to get to. You cannot play that defense without communicating, and it's over-communicating. And I saw too many times in the second half during the condensed game where you have Kings looking at other Kings, pointing at other Kings. Lance, you were in Stockton last night. There was a play where um, it, there was a stretch right before about the two-minute mark where it looked like Santa Cruz was going to go on a run. The Kings had turned it over a couple times, and um, the Kings turn it over again. Slauson gets all the way back, damn near takes himself out on the rim. But on that play, 
Scal Labissier was all the way at the end of the court. He didn't come down, and Slauson let him knew it, know it. Like, he kept him accountable, and that's a guy that's, you know, just starting his NBA career, and a guy on Scal who's there to be a veteran presence. So that was encouraging about the Stockton team, but they're communicating. So the Sacramento team needs to do the same. Kings looked pretty bad yesterday. So I hear uh, Kings are going to get blown out by 30-plus. Zakar, if they do, then just roll it up. Let the guys get some rest for uh, Brooklyn. That's literally the way that I see it. Adam, heavy dose of Edwards instead of Barnes. Doubt it. Flores, what's up, dude? Uh, personnel was not playing consistently. Not surprised. Hey, let's talk about some personnel that is playing consistently right now, and that's Davion Mitchell. My goodness. Talk about some confidence. Jerry Reynolds has said for a while he thinks Davion – could possibly grow in to be like a Kyle Lowry type of player if he's in the right system, because this system for him really isn't the right system. Uh-oh, I see the prescriber. Hey, prescriber, I think you got your uh, prescription pad ripped yesterday, dude. You prescribed a win. You only got it half right, prescriber. I don't know, my man. But, um, yeah, so anyways, prescriber, we're just going to get you in now. I, I'm having fun with these comments today. That prescription has to be an overdose. First half was used uh, used it by the time his first quarter was done. If you don't like that with Grant Napier, yes, indeed, he will be back at halftime along with Mr. Jerry Reynolds. Can't wait for that. And make sure, if you haven't already, subscribe to Grant's channel. You guys just recently got him over 7 K 7,000 followers. Really cool. He does exclusive rants there. We have extra shows. So make sure you check that out if you haven't already. Uh, all right. Edward hopping in, launching threes when the Knicks started taking the lead was just stupid. I don't know why Fox doesn't attack the cup. Have to ask De'Aaron Fox. But but let let's let's be fair to De'Aaron Fox. If Mike Brown is telling him to spray the ball. And he talked about that too. Did you get that in that soundbite? He's kind of talking about, well, do you pass up a good shot? He's openly to me, he's questioning the coach and the offense. Um, he's not doing it in a way that's disrespectful, but he's certainly doing it in a way that um, maybe to me, that's a conversation behind the scenes. And that's a conversation that's not probably right smack in the middle of one of the hardest back-to-backs you could possibly have on the NBA schedule. Um, so I don't know. I, this is why we talked about with Monk out, who's going to step up? And Davion Mitchell has stepped up. He's getting those Monk minutes. Now the question becomes, Davion Mitchell can't be Malik Monk, but but can, can he give the Kings the RC Cola? of uh Malik Monk can he give him that version the cheaper knockoff that still gives the Kings enough of what they need and I'm seeing all you guys talking about the Kings shot selection and shooting threes down the stretch let's see Marcelo let's get you in here Kings will not make it out of the first round so bonus is the weak link Marcelo do you have the wrong show you, you must have the wrong show so I, I know you didn't mean Sabonis, or was there somebody named Sabonis on that game show sometime called The Weakest Link, right? Goodbye. No, dude, come on. Let, let's be real about that. And by the way, I have already messed up this show I was supposed to lead with. I promised my son, for those that follow me on social, he had surgery a couple of days ago, very minor surgery. And uh, we promised him because he found the Dave and Buster's Roblox game and so we're like hey we'll make dave and busters come to life for you wink wink and uh we took them out there today great time and get this they have plinko from the price is right how many of you like wanted to play plinko wanted to play the yodeler game they have plinko liam got the mega bonus it hadn't been hitting like a thousand in some time so i know you guys don't care he wanted me to lead the show with it so gotta lead the show with that so getting back to the comments, uh, Excel have to have a short memory. Yeah, you just literally throw this film out. Uh, you touched on it a bit on the Kings court. Do Fox Sabonis make each other better? I think Monk Sabonis do. Uh, great question, Lance. And that's a question 
uh, that I've been, I've really been kicking around to people in the know. And uh, I, when I say people in the know, those connected to De'Aaron Fox. And, um, you know, really not much of a comment for sure. I mean, there is some type of acknowledgement that, you know, it's been a different year. Let's put it that way. Um, but do they make each other better? As I sit right now, and it's a it's a really, really heavy question because you got to be careful how you answer it. I'm going to think about it, but Lance, I think you probably know which way I'm leaning. And I know all you think I'm negative and all that, or I don't like Fox. I love Fox. I do. I, I, I think he is a picture perfect face of the franchise. Keeps his nose out of trouble off the court. Uh, it, it, great, great family, man. It, it's just strictly basketball. Rick Sabonis needs to dominate down low. Porzingis is soft as Charmin, yet Porzingis is also as long as Charmin. So that makes it tough. He can just go, boop. It, what do the young kids do these days? Is that it? And just get it right over their head. So that's where the Kings have to be careful. I think what you want to do, in my opinion, with this Boston team, especially because they don't have Jalen. I, I would be running some zone defense at this team and making them beat you from beyond the three point line. They're great at shooting the three, make them beat you there. That, that's what you got to do. And just take the chance that those threes are going to be off. Now you can make them beat you from beyond the arc without giving them open shots. And that is exactly exactly why coach brown is talking about closing out and all of those things kessler tat took me off guard as our edwards tat took me off guard uh oh who's got a tat somebody got a tat in here mike brown wants the team to keep shooting up threes but that mentality is not working uh time coach to think of another game plan no he doesn't i think you guys are getting the I think we're getting the wires crossed here. Let's uncross the wires. My understanding of the Sacramento Kings offense, and if you see it differently, and this is my understanding from what I've heard from the team, what I've heard from Coach Brown, and those in the know, this is the type of basketball Coach Brown has wanted to play since coming to Sacramento. He had to make a quick U-turn last year, and... I don't think the Kings, when they retooled, and they really didn't retool, but when they brought Lyles back in the offseason and they go and make a move here, move there, nothing that changes the team too dramatically but gives them some depth. Well, other than Lyles, the majority of the depth, Chris Duarte that was brought in, Alex Len, who re-signed, the majority of the depth this season has been defensive depth. So even in the off season, even in the off season, the Kings, after having the top offense in the history per offensive rating in the NBA, they didn't improve their offense. What's that tell you? It, it says, hey, our offense is where it needs to be. Now it's time to go to work on defense. And I think that's why they, they were forced into, let's put it this way, with the injuries, they were forced into this style about, 20 games ago, 15, 20 games ago. Now they still have to play it. So no, I, I think the three pointers that coach Brown is talking about, if you have an open three within the offense, he wants you to pull it. He's made that clear. Now he's also mixed in basketball IQ with that. He doesn't want stuff going away from the bucket. He doesn't want fadeaways. You heard that at the top of the show. Now, I think this next part is where the confusion is. If, if you draw two defenders, whether you're on the perimeter or whether you drive down and you make the defense collapse, Mike Brown wants that ball going out for a three. That is the difference. He wants in those situations that to be a three. If it's there, obviously, if it's not and you've got a wide open eight foot jumper, you're going to take that instead of just picking up your dribble and waiting for somebody to get to the three-point line. So to me, that is where the points have to be made up for the lack of explosion, which comes with Malik Monk no longer on this team. So if you can get three instead of two in those situations, 
And when you think about, and this is why Mike harps on the spray three-pointers, Keegan Murray made a living last year shooting spot-up three-pointers that were just that, spray threes, before we talked about them. If you look at the shots that the Kings thrived on last year, spray threes, inside-out basketball. So that's what he wants. Now, again, now we're talking conceptually, you have a point guard that needs the ball in his hands, yet the offense is running through your center because he can pass better. It's a really weird situation. We're not talking enough about how much it would mess us up in the offseason if we do not make the playoffs because there's no reason to talk about it. The Kings are still in contention for the playoffs. Appreciate the comment. Marcelo, uh, what else? Uh, Marcelo, I think, you no, know, who was it that had that bad comment? PK, it just feels like uh, with the threes, only Herder and Monk are comfortable. No, no. Keegan's very comfortable shooting the three. I would even argue Sabonis is comfortable in spots shooting the three. Um, but Barnes, he's comfortable shooting it. No, I think they're comfortable. But the difference is, guys, this is the difference with your Kings. What you're seeing right now is you really, and I'm going to say you have one and a half players on this active roster right now that can create their own shot. OK, so that is the big thing. That's why it's so imperative for the guys that can create their own shots to be able to distribute. That's why I tagged eight assists to De'Aaron Fox. He's got to have eight assists. Edward, I watched game archives, slowed it down, and there was so many questionable calls or no calls against the Kings. Thought they're trying or they're letting them uh, be more physical. It, look. If you know what the referees are doing and you have an idea of what it might be on a night-to-night -night basis, you know more than anybody else. So I, I'm not sure how to uh, respond to that. Garbage. Get out of here with that. Uh, PK, right now we are too easy for you. Okay. So we're getting kind of we're getting kind of uh, predictable now. Uh, you call it last night, Ryan. How many times can you shoot threes, fool's gold in the first half? It wasn't fool's gold. They got good looks. De'Aaron Fox got really good looks, and he knocked them down. They were in the flow of the offense. Hell, why are you not running more DHO with De'Aaron and Domas? Why not? Why not? Question for you. We're getting you ready for the Kings and the Celtics here in just a few minutes. We are open. Phones all show if you want to chime in. Uh, let's see. Oh, Arturo. By the way, Rhino, uh, Dan and Brian from Props took great care. Love it. Arturo, thanks for going into Pops. I know John has been in there as well. I'm glad they took care, good care of you. They're awesome people. Awesome, awesome. We're going to the phones. We're bringing in Baki. What's up across the sea, buddy? Everything okay? Just one little question for you. What? So after... Everything what happened last 24 hours, what would you apply for tonight games? I mean, what will be the tactics if you are the coach? Um, the tactics are to literally try to muck the game up. You you want to make it as ugly as physical. You want it to be a race to 100 points. I say that all the time. And then you also want to, you don't want to give them the same look. Every time down, Baki, this is a game where and we've seen it in the past where the Kings do it. They've successfully guarded high level guards with this type of game plan. But you just have to constantly switch out who is going to be out there on the perimeter, whether it be on Tatum or somebody else. So that to me is huge. And then the numbers we already know, Baki, they've got to win transition both ways, both offensively and defensively um turnovers they've got to be low uh so it, it's just a lot of things how about yourself well i would go with that ugly pick of three-point basketball all the way i will nail it tonight my tactics will be only shoot the goddamn three and if we win we win if we lose Never mind, we already lose. So that's it. Yeah, I, will I mean, be very short. D 
did in Bucky, I'm not sure if you did and everybody else did. Did you hear Mike Brown's comments after practice uh, before? It was before uh, this last game against New York. It was nope. basically, yeah, it, it was, it was basically, I played it, I think to start the Kings court uh, yesterday. He said, you can't win in the playoffs with the type of basketball that we're talking about with the three ball. He's conceding that doesn't work. And you can't, okay. you, you okay. can't, you can't go into the playoffs expecting to go deep if you're relying on a jump shot no i'm i'm thinking only about this game okay yeah. this particular game because this is nothing to lose game so bring it on bring it on they they've just got to they have to want it more than boston that's the key to the game they just have to want it more that's how it is so uh you got any predictions for the first half baki no, absolutely no predictions. No predictions. All right. Well, we will see you no. probably after the game, buddy. Good luck. Hope you enjoy watching it. All right. Big thanks to Baki. Real quick, let's get to the guru. What's up, Zach? How you got? How you doing, man? Good. Uh, just want to say, uh, yeah, I think you're right. We do got to muck it up. No yeet. Whoa. What is that? I got a no yeet button for you and I don't like what you say. Do you know what no yeet means? No. Yeah, it basically means like boo. So yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> boo you. No yeet. Well, I was agreeing so. with you. Yeah, that's why I'm booing you. Anyways, <laughs> go ahead. Um, no, but yeah, they, they, they do got to muck it up a little bit. And um, the one thing when they're blitzing, like if they're going to try to blitz Tatum if he's on fire or something today, they got to do it. They got to scatter that. They can't just keep doing like you five can't. positions in a row. No. You can't. You, and, and you also have to disguise it, Zach, within yep. some um, full court, whether it be fake press or some actual full court where you're picking up the ball carrier. And that's when you kind of sneak up, do that two trap right in the corner yep. of the front court. Um, and it's then, yeah, I, you just can't be on the run defensively like they are. This team's not at a point because they're still kind of – gelling again because you've worked two guys back into it and now you have guys playing bigger minutes they're gonna need some time to come together and they're gonna need some time to mold so they've just got to keep working man and yeah. figure out what that secret sauce is gonna be I, 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 yeah they, i gotta uh because i i feel like if they're gonna try to do that blitzing then someone just gets in the middle like i think that you know they're scouting the kings pretty good they know that they do this blitz stuff a lot and so they they, they know where the they can find the open guy usually in the middle and then the guy just goes in for a floater or they can pass it in if uh, Sabonis comes in too early. But I, if they want to do that, I feel like it's more effective if Len is the center, maybe for Correct. the bench minutes, and that you know they can uh, lure him into Len and he can actually do some defensive interior D. But, um, yeah, because, you know, I mean, I've seen at least a lot. They blitzed Brunson, Hart was getting inside, Doncic doing the same thing, and um, hopefully they can have a different game plan. I, I'm not expecting too much, but you never know with these Kings. I, I still have hope. Hey, man. Come on. Come on. I got hope with you, too. Um, You know, I think what you said about they that trap, the last thing I want to add, for those that don't know, that trap that we're talking about, that they're doing or doubling Brunson, I said it at the top, we did it in college. We doubled the post, no matter who was down there. Um. It, it just, Zach, it's usually a play that's reserved. You guys remember the game a couple weeks ago? It's about a month ago where Sabonis got the steal at the very end, got the dunk. Spurs? Th yes. That was, that was that type of play. It's like your two-point conversion play. It's like your fourth down play defensively. You throw that in once in a while when they would least expect a second guy to be coming. And so you just give them way too much. These guys are too good. They're too good. You're asking the best team in the NBA, the Celtics, and the best team by a wide margin um, to pick you apart with basketball IQ. And that's what they do, that whole organization, IQ from the top. I, I'm scared because, you know, this team, is the Celtics are big on threes, and uh, we give a lot of those. So hopefully we can test these threes pretty good today. Um, that's, just, that's really our only way. I mean, like, what, Celtics got to shoot under, like, 33% from three to even have a chance we'll see well if you yeah 
Totally. If you keep them, I, I'll tell you this, Zach, if they keep the Celtics to 35% or under, the Kings will have a chance to win this game. And if the Kings get to 100 first, they'll have a chance to win this game too. I'm not going to say 115 wins it, but if the Kings get to 100 first, that means they've really mucked up what the Celtics want to do. And the Celtics, guys, hey, you know what, Zach, I'm glad you're here for this and I'll let you go right after this. We're talking about the Celtics like, um, you know, they're the next coming. But the reality is the Celtics have some really bad losses on their season, too. So it can be done. You've seen the Kings lose to bad teams. I've seen the Celtics lose big leads. So sometimes when they don't have their full complement of players, their chemistry's off. So if Sacramento gets that opportunity, they've got to hop on it. And they've also, Coach Brown, has to do a better job of calling timeouts if there's a run going on. You, you got to do it. You don't have as much um, – there's not as much rope in the middle to play with anymore. Yeah, no no Jalen Brown or Derek White today. Yeah. And, uh, the white left. one is what's big to me. Derek White is your prototypical guy that you would – he's your Josh Hart tonight that you would have left open, and he will kill you from behind the line. That guy should have been on the all-star team this year. Yeah, That's how good been, he's played. His advanced metrics are insane this year. Insane. And, yes. um, yeah, I think the Celtics lost to the Hawks twice this year. Um, I think one of them was at home. I, I can't remember. But, um, yeah, let's uh, let's hope uh, we can uh, – I mean, don't have any uh, high expectations, but let's hope something uh, – Let's just not get blown out. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'm with you, Zach. Hey, thanks for the call, man. We'll Appreciate talk to it. you later tonight, hopefully. Take hey, care. Hey, we need to yeah. connect offline, dude. I, are you on Twitter? Yes, sir. Okay. You follow me? Uh, I'll double check, but I'll, I'll follow you for sure today or something, or refollow you just to, so you can see it. Perfect. Thanks. All right, All right thanks. Let it. Take care. Zach, MBA guru. All right, y'all. We are getting ready to uh, get you out. Tip-off is just about here. Let's get some scores in there. Um, I'm actually feeling somewhat optimistic about this. I think your Kings are going to come out, play a really good half. Um, my perfect scenario for this game would be one where the Kings just hang around, hang around, hang around, and at the end just pounce. Um, but I saw some comments about Keon and some of the foul trouble. I, I think that's a fair thing to look at tonight. Again, he's being asked to guard better guards. He has the last couple games. So we'll keep a close eye on that. And don't forget that I, I think I told you this on the Kings court, but let me remind you here, it is brunch season at Bennett's Westside Grill in Rockland. Two other locations, one on Howe and Fair Oaks, other in Roseville, we have our date. I talked to Brian yesterday for our King's Court Listener Appreciation Brunch. That's right. We're going to have some special guests. It's going to be a really good time, a, a nice gathering of this community we're being. That includes our community on if you don't like that. Grant won't be there. I know a lot of you listen to both shows, and we thank you so much. So I'll let you know how you can get your VIP ways to get there. Lance has already secured his way to the Bennett's VIP brunch. But make sure you go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Check out their menus, specials, and uh, also telling you the brunch, two entrees, 44 bucks. Really hard to beat. Really, really hard to beat. Can't wait. I can't wait, too. All right, so um, Kings, Celtics, nothing more left to say. Let's see how they do roll the ball out, as they say. Let them play. Let's look at the refs. We will see how the refs are going to call this one. Um, punch Boston in the face. Punch them in the face. All right, y'all. We will see you at the halftime. Do not forget, Grant and Jerry will be right back here. We'll be breaking it down. And then after the game was so much fun, I watched your guys' or I watched Grant's post-game show. You guys had some really good calls, you know, fostering dogs to play as the three guard for the, or the three for the Sacramento Kings. It's forward. Well done. So, all right. Enjoy the first half. We'll see you at the half.